tearing into any hive it can possibly get its hands on every single wait whoa 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 <gasps> see what i did to this like last time i checked on all of these like i said they were filling up every single frame with honey we might need to start taking frames out and like just storing them somewhere to extract soon it's social over the season for me to do put on here and say they have an excess workflow about that they'll come up and work that box you know why they're probably not drawing out frames in this hive they didn't have a laying queen for a while so these bees are old it's kind of laying a crappy pattern how do i even check these hives in a speedy way I just want to know, like, what... Mm -hmm. I need to add space, really. So then I gotta go through both boxes to see what's going on. Gotta happen anyway. Ah, okay. What we got? Let's see, this was a... What's the date today? 27th, I think. So it's been almost two weeks. They should have a queen that's either on a flight... Well, open queen cell. She should be a virgin right now. Okay, so note to sell for next time. These hives will not draw out comb if there's not a laying queen. One, because there's not a laying queen. But two, because there's not young enough bees to do it. Because, like, they're only drawing it if they have to. And they're drawing it stupid. Like, why do they draw this one out here? What was the point in that? But they missed all of those. Like, what the heck are they doing? I still can't hear you. I said it's cool they're being calm today. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> she should be back later by now. So I just went through this hive and I realized that they are in the beginning stages of laying worker. They have queen cells, but I don't even know what's going on with that, but there's multiple eggs in some of the cells, which tells me it's laying workers. So we're going to end up moving this hive, combining it with some other hives to help strengthen them so that the other hives can start pulling in more honey and whatnot. But the key is we're gonna have to put them on a mated queen. All right, so we're gonna have to get rid of this, put some water on it. And this is going to be a LW that we're gonna take care of today. First, we gotta see what's going on in these other ones still. Unfortunately, this is just the name of the game with beekeeping. I let these hives make their own queen instead of adding a queen to them. Um, would have been better off just adding a queen to them, but at the time we didn't have any we could add in and we had a plan for everything, but that's okay. We will just combine it with a different hive and because other hives could use more bees. So, and everything will be okay. Got a lot of honey in here still. So that's good. Really pretty. Okay. Oh my gosh, all this propolis right here, they are going ham. Um, so how am I gonna get these frames out? I probably should have put these down to nine frames. Cause now they're so full. I'm gonna cause a lot of ruckus just to get them out. I do like that the bees are a lot calmer today though. I haven't been using smoke besides that first one. Okay, so we got some honey and some pollen. Got a lot of uh, capped honey in here. Okay, got one egg. But we gotta make sure that's not a laying worker egg. This is one that also had a queen cell. What's up? My dad just offered me mm -hmm. an interesting opportunity. What's that? Um, she's willing to. My mom found a boat that she wants that's different than that boat. Okay. My dad wants to sell it to me for a hundred bucks a month. 
could have a lake. Does it run? 100% run. We could literally take it to the lake today. Trailer and all? I don't know. That's the trailer, the boat, the motor, the trolling motor. Everything works. We could literally take it out to the lake tomorrow. Oh, so it's one of the trailing motor? Yeah, it's trolling motor and everything. Live well, all night. Like, we could literally go fishing tomorrow. And it runs. And it runs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I just don't make decisions without you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, no, we could. Oh, that's actually awesome. We should do that this weekend then. We should go out in the lake this weekend then. Okay. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I got a bad feeling about this hive. There's a lot of bee bread, which is telling me possibly laying worker. When I see this much bee bread in the brood nest like this. It happens overnight in every frame. Yep. It seems like, whoa, should have like just laid 17 frames. I think they may be going laying worker. I only saw one cell so far, like one egg, I mean. But there could have been more, I couldn't tell, it was a white frame. But judging by all this bee bread, I don't see this as a laying queen or one that's waiting for a queen to come back on a flight. They will go laying real fast if they know their queen died on the flight. Yeah. They know if she makes it back. They know way before she comes back. I, that's my belief anyway. I think this one's a premature one. If we add a laying queen, they'll then this would actually be the perfect time to add a laying queen to them, probably. Because they only have laid like a couple eggs so far. That's what all those nukes are. Any queen that have nukes in there are getting combined at any hive down here that don't have. Um, we just have to make sure we newspaper them well. Because, yeah, this one's a pre laying worker. So, if you guys hear that, the way I'm distinguishing this is when you look at through the brood nest and literally. And almost all of these frames that I'm pulling out of the middle right here um, is all bee bread. And I've noticed this in every single hive that goes laying worker on me or is queenless. Um, they'll keep it open if they know a queen is coming or is about to um, be mated and whatnot. But if they know that she's gone and she's not coming back, then like Casey said, just overnight, all of a sudden, every single cell is full of bee bread. So I think this one's premature which is perfect, perfect timing to catch it because it'll be easier to keep them on a, on a mated queen. Yeah, there's no queen in here, I can tell. Plus, as you keep beekeeping, you'll start to learn when you're looking in your hives, um, you'll be able to tell if they're queenless or not pretty quickly. I can tell you some of the signs that I can tell, but some of it's kind of a, just like watching the bees and you just know by the way they act and like where they're putting things. And this one's definitely queenless, without a doubt. So, yeah, this one's getting combined. They're producing a lot of propolis, too. Like an extreme amount of propolis. There's a problem here, actually. I mean, I think mean, it's worth something, but it's propolis here. I need to get you a mic. <laughs> I need to get a mic on you so they can all hear you. No, I'm sorry. I can't scream any louder. I'm just up on the phone. I know. You're fine. So what do you, what even makes them make propolis? What are they getting that makes them make so much propolis, do you know? It's uh, tree resin. From tree oh, really? Bugs. Yeah, it's, it's resin from trees. I'm oh. not sure the tree or the types of trees, but that's what it is. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so this one needs to be combined. And this hive will take off once we get a mated queen in there. I think we're reaching the stage of the older bees were dying are dying off now though. Yeah. Because our hive numbers are down. From when they were queenless. Yeah, that's what you saw happen with Vipolio, how she went from super packed and she never swarmed into like a less packed situation. Well I don't really think it's necessarily winter bees. I think it's just because they haven't had a laying queen in so long. Oh my gosh. Look at this frame. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try that. Now. Okay. That's hard. All right, I'll start a box in a minute.
but the other one didn't even leave space first. So that's why I'm like, why is it that some hives leave space for the queen, but other ones don't? Yeah. Okay, so I had to go through and get everything situated before I could tell you guys exactly what I was doing so I can explain it a little better. So, this is what I did. So, okay. I was over here and I had found that these two were starting to go laying worker. This one had multiple eggs in a cell. This one had um, a lot of bee bread, but no eggs yet. I could tell by looking at the hive and the placement of where they were putting things that this hive was going to be going laying worker. And they're probably gonna start laying cells in the next couple days. So what I end up doing is I end up breaking down both of these hives. Some frames went over here that Casey used in these hives. Um, but the rest of these, I have been stacking up boxes and using them to boost other boxes, other hives that have laying queens. So like these ones, this one, I use some of them to boost this hive. That's why I have newspaper on it because I'm doing a, a um, combine of those laying workers with the mated queen that's in the bottom box. And this is gonna give them a ton more bees so that also that queen can start laying even more so that they can really, really hit this flow. Um, and also so they can start moving stuff up and moving stuff out of her way. Um, also did the same thing here. That one, I'm still waiting to come back on a flight. She should be back soon. They're leaving a lot of space open for her. So that's what's telling me she's probably on a flight right now. Um, the laying queen there. And then I also put one of the boxes of laying workers right here. I threw it on newspaper on top of a very strong colony. She's already starting to lay sheets and sheets of, of eggs um, between both of these boxes. A lot of these queens, they just came back, so they're laying their first round of eggs. Um, so this is gonna help her lay even more and so that, like I said, they can move the resources that are clogging up the brood nest right now. This will let them have more space so they can then move it up and give her more space to be able to lay more eggs and lay more brood. Because honeybees like to build out their hives so that they have all the brood in the middle, in the center, and then they'll put an arc of honey around that. They want all the brood in the workforce to be right there in case there's an invader so that they then, they then can attack the invader before it even gets to the honey. Um, so they're going to maintain that and they're going to push for that themselves so that that queen can start laying and have everything right together. Because right now there's so much honey coming in that she's struggling to find space. So... Yeah, pretty simple. Let's go see what Casey has going on up here. Oh, how's Vipledu doing? Right here. I will show it to you in a second. And you can find out where she went. Okay. That should be okay. She's pretty. I like her little butt. She's got a little purple butt. I want a good picture of her. <laughs> yeah, we've been finding frames all over the place that they've been eating out. Why are you doing that? Just so they don't have to drag it all the leaf and stuff through like three frames of hives. We've been building out a couple frames that are like this and they actually start to build them out nicely so they can start using them when uh, they're all messed up like that. That's from the raccoon, by the way. <laughs> Yes, very much in so right now we've been condensing everything this is our main mating yard so we've had a lot of queens coming and going um, a lot of queens mating moving stuff around so today we're condensing things so that we have strong colonies with mated queens for the next round of queens that we have right now in grafts um, actually in cells in the incubator um, that we're gonna get mated and then we'll split everything all over again. So Casey's been moving everything around. All right for the mess. <laughs> I think people understand how it goes in a bee yard. Sometimes it gets so busy that yes, it ends up being a mess. <laughs> and that's okay. Especially when we work, both work two jobs. Yes, especially that. <laughs> We usually come here right after after work, and then we're here until like 8 p.m. every single night. So, yeah, it can be a little much sometimes. And then this raccoon, too, making it worse. <laughs> well, one of them got gotten. Now we gotta get them on. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably not happy that we got its friend. 
Ah, sorry. I think it was a baby bed. <laughs> okay, so what do you have going on over here? Um, we're going to wrap, wrap these down, but they're going to sit there for the night. Um, all, the, all the bees that were to the left or right, they'll come back to, the, the, to their hives. But that whole three foot or three mile situation, so because we're losing maybe them less than three foot, they'll find their hives. We'll collect all the bees tonight and then they'll orientate to this like spot. And then we will drop them with the newspaper combined and the hives to their queen right underneath of them. And these 10 frames will go into that box and they will stay in their spot. Instead of keep trying to go back to where they were. Mm -hmm. This will give them like a night to get ready to be moved. Yeah. That way uh, the bees in here, they'll get out on this landing board and start fanning their pheromones. So they'll bring the bees right over here immediately. But then that way uh, they won't lose the foraging force when they go back down in there. And that is that. Another busy day in the bee yard and it's only going to keep getting busier because it is definitely flow season. Literally everywhere I drive, I just keep seeing fields and fields and fields of yellow flowers. I've never seen so many flowers. This part of Michigan really hits it really good for being a beekeeper. So that is it for me today. Thank you for following along and thank you so much for being here. It means the absolute world to both me and Casey and I'll see you guys in the next one. So today is a great day. You guys know that we've been having a huge issue with raccoons. Um, has been tearing into all of our hives, eating the queens, tearing apart all of our mini mating nukes. Well, we finally caught it in this little trap, which we're going to dispose of it a couple hundred miles away. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> So that it does not come back and keep destroying our hives. Casey had an amazing idea. Do you want to explain how you did it? I put a the mini mating nuke off the table where it had to come through to get it. No matter what it did, it couldn't get it from any side. Um, and then I drew it in here. I put sugar water in the mating nuke and it came in. and It eventually tore up the mating nuke. But Oh, jeez. I didn't even see that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Nuke. Literally, I mean, I guess I had nothing else to do, so I decided to just uh, tear them apart. But happy that we finally got the uh, villain in our in our yard gone, so that we can now start raising some queens without any issues. <laughs> no more issues.